Today's video is sponsored by SysAid, who have just launched its new AI Agent Builder, and it comes complete with pre-built, ready-to-use AI agents. It's transforming the way IT teams work. For more details, check out the link below or visit them today at sysaid.com. IT admin, how many times has somebody said to you, I'd wish I'd known that before I started? It's okay, I've got you covered this week. So whether it's a DNS configuration or a network misconfiguration, Active Directory gone wrong or Microsoft 365 users unlicensed, we've all been there and experienced the situation where somebody says, I'd wish I'd known that earlier. So in this week's episode, I'm going to check out my favorite, I'd wish I'd known that earlier moments to make your lives a lot easier. Now, just to mention that stick around to the end because this is a great collection and it'll definitely be worth you staying. Okay, now just to mention that if you haven't subscribed to the channel, then please bump the subscribe button up there and come and join my learning community. And if you've got questions and comments or even some cool tips yourself, get them down below because folks do read that stuff and it's awesome. Okay, I think without any further ado, let's jump in and check out these. I'd wish I'd known that before we started. Enjoy. So the first I wish I'd known that really comes when we talk about domains and DNS. So if you've tried to bring in what your own domain name, this is super important to get right. So typically when you add a domain in, you paste in your domain name and it will offer you something that looks like this. Super important, by the way, that you keep a copy of this because I've seen domain name host providers and so on have problems and they lose the domain and they have problems with it. And it, I tell you, and it's a lot of work getting this back. So very simply, stick it into a text file and you will find your life so much easier. So if I just pop into DNS here, and you can see that I've created a zone file, which essentially says I've got responsibility for this zone, and it's using my own custom domain name. And you can see I've gone ahead and I pasted that MS record here. So as I've said, vendors can easily have problems, and I've seen it where DNS records get accidentally deleted. But do yourself a favor, if you've got a copy of this file, it will save you so much hassle. So my next, I wish I'd known that earlier, it definitely comes down to licensing. Licensing is a real minefield in Microsoft 365. And Microsoft are a little cheeky, if you don't mind me saying so, pushing their Windows 11 licenses, especially for me, the likes of a user who uses a Mac. But there we go. Um, so also something that you've seen recently added is the no teams option. So if you want Microsoft Teams, you've got to pay for that extra. Thanks very much, EU. A um, couple of things that you'll notice, though, as extras, which are kind of cool, um, the Entra Suite. So the Entra Suite includes a P2 license. It includes um, things like a lot of uh, additional features, including global secure access. You get verified ID. You get loads, so many other things that would cost you a lot more if you purchased them individually. Likewise, with the Intune Suite license, you get everything here in Intune Suite. So not just the basic products, but also the additional things which are quite useful. Now, you might find that actually not every user needs one of these licenses. So you could kind of mix and match, but it is quite useful. Um, so just to be let you understand with licensing, you can go into your billing uh, area in your portal here and you can see all the different licenses that you've got and also the status of those. You can see I've got some trials that I've, I've done that have expired. But needless to say, it shows you how many licenses that you've got, how many you're, you're actually using and so on. So this can be really useful. Do remember as well that you're paying for the licenses even though you've not assigned them to somebody. So again, be careful with that, especially if you're bulk buying. 
And as I mentioned, it's very confusing to know what licenses that you've got. This tool is absolutely awesome m365maps.com. So absolutely awesome. It shows you all the different plans and it's completely up to date. You see Tonya 2025. So I've got to thank Aaron for this. He's done a fantastic job. You can come down to the likes of a feature matrix here and I can say, hey, I just want to select none. Show me the difference, Andy, between let's say an E3 and let's say an E5 with security. Um, and you can add those in. You can really get an idea of, you know, is it actually worth it? Um, just also an, another quick tip. Know that business premium, all the business licenses, certainly business premium, up to 300 users. The enterprise or e-licenses are up to unlimited numbers. So definitely make sure that you understand the licensing because, again, it's something you may regret down the line. Okay, so up next is an app that I'm sure you all know. Every admin's friend is the remote desktop connection. It's been around for a million years. Well, it feels like that anyway. <laughs> and you can connect to any machine on your network. Uh, again, simply connect. So yes, are you sure you wanna connect? I am indeed. And then you simply put in your password and you're pretty much good to go. So really, really simple. Now, the problem with the RDP as a protocol, of course, is you should never allow it over a public network inbound, um, basically because it's the hacker's favorite port, port 3389. So you definitely want to block that port. But something else that you might not know is that like many communication apps, they often store sensitive information. So to avoid that, what you want to do is you want to use something called the slash public switch. Let me show you. Again, so super easy. Rather than going in through the settings menu, what you want to do is you want to basically paste this command in here. So this is the command line tool, but with the slash public switch. So whatever you type in here, no matter what it is, nothing is cached. So in other words, this is essentially incognito mode. So again, I can simply come into the same uh, portal, do exactly the same thing. And again, I'm gonna connect and just put in my password. And sure enough, you get the same connection. So the only difference is that this time, you know that if there's anything sensitive that's being transmitted, then nothing is being cached uh, on that machine. And that, my friends, is incognito mode. And as for this next one, I thought, where the heck have you been all my life? This is Enter ID, and I'm simply going to select a whole bunch of users here, and I'm gonna say, hey, I wanna make some changes to these users. Well, you couldn't do this before, you had to use PowerShell. But now we've got the edit multi-user feature up here, and I can simply add a manager, sponsors, add to a group, admin unit, Hey, and if you don't see the option here, then don't worry, it's up here. Edit the users. I can simply say, hey, I want all these users, let's say, to be in Manchester. So now with a single click of a button, all of our users are now in Manchester. So I simply go into the user account, go into a properties, contact information, and check it out. She's now in Manchester. Simple, but awesome feature. I love it. Well done, Microsoft. So unless you've been living on the moon for the last couple of years, then you'll notice that multi-factor authentication is no longer in Microsoft 365. And in fact, if you click onto it, you're given a nice gentle nudge to off you go with conditional access. And yeah, I can go, yep, I wanna do that, which is probably the way you wanna go if you're on a P1 license or premium uh, license, of course, which is pretty much probably the way most people are going. However, it hasn't gone away completely. So if I go into my all users pane, what we now see is this sneaky little uh, three dots at the end here. If you click onto that, we now have per user MFA here. So if you're a fan of this and you want to set this individually for on a per user basis, let's say, so I can then come up here, I can simply enable this MFA for my user. 
I can also configure the MFA settings for this user as well. So again, if I just pop into Bianca, I can go back in and I've got those same options that I had before. And this is really, really useful. So again, you can ask them to provide their contact information again and so on. Now you can also go in, of course, to the service settings as well. So uh, again, you've got a number of options. If you're, again, if you're not using conditional access, so things like app passwords, you probably don't want to have your users using passwords for apps. You'd want to try and get them onto multi-factor authentication if possible. Again, the trusted IPs, you can put in various IP uh, lists there, as well as remembering uh, things like uh, MFA on trusted devices, which is always useful. Okay, so um, our friend uh, per user MFA hasn't gone away at all. It's still here. And as Steve Jobs once said, and there's one more thing, if you've been working in Intune for the past few years, one of the frustrations that we've had is when you remove an iPhone or an Android device, it doesn't entirely remove the data from the device or the apps from the device. And this can be a little bit frustrating. Well, I was working with a customer last week and look what we discovered in the menu. On the right hand side, you can now delete all apps and data. So again, much more secure. Well done, Microsoft. So there you have it. I wish I'd known that before I started. I really hope that you found my little collection helpful. And if you've got any questions, comments, or tips of your own, get them down below. Folks do like that. And if you have enjoyed the session, give me a big thumbs up. It does make a difference. And that's it for this week. Thanks so much for dropping by. I'll see you next time. Take care. Hey, thanks so much for dropping by today. Here's a couple of videos that you may enjoy. And while you're here, go ahead, click on the subscribe button and you won't miss out.